This video is made possible by Spencer Shipley at Packy Webb Ford in Downers Grove, Illinois. Spencer is dedicated to finding the right car for you in the quickest time possible. Give him a call or contact him with the information up on the screen or found in the description below. Alright, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 2002 Porsche Boxster. Behind me is a 2.7 liter flat six, and down below is a five speed manual transmission. Guys, I am super excited to be driving this here Boxster for two main reasons. First of all, I haven't driven a Boxster of this generation. I've driven a 2011, a newer one, and I absolutely loved it. And so we'll see if the 986 compares to it. And the second reason is the fact that, guys, it's a Porsche. I am deeming 2021 the year of the Porsche here on the Shooting Cars YouTube channel. You know what they say, speak it into existence. Hopefully that'll happen and we'll drive some more Porsches this year. Now, before we get on to the rest of the video, if you guys are interested in selling your car, please click the link in the description below. Cashforcars.com will buy your car with a salvage title, good title, running, non-running, whatever it is. Please go support the channel by clicking the link in the description below. You can get a fast and easy quote for free and they will pick up your vehicle in less than 24 hours. But let's get back to the 2.7 liter flat six. Well, there were two engines offered here in the 986 Boxster. You could either get this 2.7 liter, which was the smaller engine, or the Boxster S came with the 3.2 liter flat six and obviously came with more power and more torque. I'll put the horsepower and torque up on the screen for that flat six. It's nothing really crazy. It's above 200, which I like to see out of a vehicle like this. However, it's not really going to knock your socks off. However, there is one issue with these boxer engines, and that is the IMS bearing. If you're a Porsche fan, you know all about this, but if you're not, if you're looking to buy these and you don't really know much about them, let me give you just a brief warning. The 986 Boxers, as well as the 996 Porsche 911s, minus the turbo, had IMS bearing issues. And basically it's this small little bearing in the engine that likes to uh, leave the party early, we'll say. And it, tends to take the engine with it. And so if you're looking at a Boxster like this, the first thing you should ask the owner is, has the IMS bearing been done? So if you are looking at buying a Boxster, you should definitely ask about the IMS bearing and do some more research on it as well, because Lord knows I'm not a Porsche expert. All right. just a touch squirrely in second gear i absolutely love it it is fun to drive if you want a porsche but don't want to pay 911 prices here you go guys you're welcome because i just found your next car you do get a little bit of that porsche sort of whine when you really let on to it it sounds great it's a good sounding engine would definitely benefit from an aftermarket exhaust however in its stock form, it's still fun and you get that noise right behind your ear. It's a mid-engine setup. And so the engine is really on top of and in front of the rear wheels. It's not a true 911 where it's behind the rear wheels. So you get great intake noises and just great sound right behind your ear. And that's what I love about mid-engine vehicles is that you feel more involved in the party than with a front engine. Like I said, paired to it is a five speed manual transmission and I'm actually having a decently fun time rowing through the gears. The clutch is heavier than what I would expect from a quote unquote sports car of this size. This feels a lot more like a Camaro or Mustang clutch rather than a little two seat convertible clutch. That being said, the shifting feels great. It's fun to drive and I'm really pleasantly enjoying myself. Last but not least about the drivetrain, of course, the Boxer is rear wheel drive. So let's talk about the interior. We don't have a whole lot to go through in here, but it is a Porsche and you are reminded of that quite frequently. Well, in front of me, I have three main gauges. On the left is my speedometer, in the middle is my tachometer, and on the right is my coolant temperature and fuel. I love the center mount tachometer. I think it's so important for sporty vehicles to have a center mount attack. I think it's one of the most important features of a sporty vehicle because that's what I'm looking at. When I'm driving spiritedly, that's what I'm looking at. I also like in the gauges at the bottom left, I do get my speed in digits as well, which is very, very nice for 2002. That's something that I'm starting to see in modern 2021 vehicles, but back in 02, 
the boxer had it. On the steering wheel, I actually don't have any buttons and I really like that in a more driver oriented vehicle. I have cruise control, but it's on a stock. I don't have any radio buttons or anything like that. It, nothing's fluffing up or messing with the steering wheel. And I love the little Porsche logo on it as well. I think it just looks absolutely fantastic. To the left of me, this is actually where you'll find the key for the ignition. Porsche has always done this. I do have my headlights to the left of that, which is nice and a little vent. And on the door, I don't actually have any buttons besides the power or mirrors up at the very top. It's a very slim door card and I like it a lot. Moving into the center, I do have my climate control vents. They look very 2000s. And then two cup holders, which we... <laughs> It's not even worth doing a, a big friggin' bottle test. Uh, the, the Porsche Boxer fails. It fails very hard. And then I do have the Porsche radio. This is the factory radio. I don't get an aux or anything like that. Very, very basic, very early 2000s, and I like it. It's very period correct, but you don't really have a lot of music options in here, unfortunately. So I would recommend either swapping out the radio if you get one, or getting a transmitter. However, I do have a CD player down below that radio, so I can listen to CDs if that is the medium in which you'd like to choose. However, it's a four disc player, so there's four different slots which is just very interesting. Then I have my climate controls at the very bottom. It has the same sort of amber information screen like in the gauge cluster, and I like it. High, low, I do have auto climate control, which is great. Defrost or recirculate, pretty much any basic thing you would need out of a vehicle's climate controls. Then we have the shifter itself. The shifter looks good in my opinion, and it feels good too. It's really slim. It's actually a lot more slim than I expected to get in a vehicle like this. Very early 2000s, but it works, it feels good, and it operates well, and that's all I can ask for from a manual shifter. Then this is actually where I'll find my power window switches. So they are down here on the center console, just like you would find in a lot of other European cars. A BMW is notorious for doing it like this, and it's nice that I do get power windows. I have a little ashtray, and then I have heated seats. Again, a very nice feature for 2002, which is found here on the Boxer. Then I do have a center console in case you wanna carry around one lone candy bar with you. And then we have to talk about the seats. The seats are plain. I wish that they had the Porsche logo on them. I wish they sort of felt a little bit more exclusive. However, they are comfortable. Like I said, they are heated, they are leather. And I have to say they've aged pretty well. This vehicle has 56,000 miles on it and they look pretty good. But since we don't have back seats, we will do a frunk review, which is the front trunk, and then we'll talk about the looks of the 986. So we're on the front of the Boxer. Don't get to do many front trunks, but there's a little latch here. Pull it up. The struts don't really want to work anymore, but we do get a spare tire, which is very, very nice. And that's really it. It is a pretty deep front trunk, which is really nice. And that's what I love about Porsches of this generation is that they do actually have a lot of storage. Speaking of storage, actually come around the back here, we have a second trunk. So you can't actually really access the engine unless you pull that bulkhead back, but you do actually have a pretty fair sized trunk for a convertible. I mean, well, okay, that didn't want to stay up. Here's how you open these, by the way. So you actually do get a trunk in the front and the back of the Boxer. Really, really nice. Now we got to talk about the looks. I actually really love the look of the Boxer and the 986. This car actually kind of gets a lot of heat from enthusiasts because of the headlights. They strayed away from just the circular headlights and these are sort of the egg yolk headlights. It looks like a cracked egg on a skillet. And I understand that. However, this was the boxer that I grew up knowing and loving. This was the boxer from Need for Speed Porsches Unleashed. This was the boxer from my childhood. This was the one, this was the cool hip thing when I was coming of age. When this particular car was built, I was five years old. And so this is what I had a matchbox of. This is what I had a little die cast of growing up. As a matter of fact, a close friend of ours actually had a midnight blue Porsche 996, cracked egg headlights and all. And so this just has that sort of comforting feel to it, to people my age. It brings me back to my childhood, just like 
laser tag birthday party rooms or those little wax animals you used to get at the zoo. It just makes me feel simple and happy. And this car is finished in Zanzibar red, which I can't believe they named a color after a Halo 2 map. Maybe their next red will be last resort red. Speaking of exteriors, if you are legally required to run a front plate on your vehicle in the state or country that you live in, but you think it's too ugly, then click the link in the description below and get yourself a con plate. The con plate holder is a suction cup holder for your license plate that goes on the inside of your windshield. This means you can remain legal when driving around, but for pictures, for shows it's easily removable from the windshield so the front of your car looks its best click the link in the description below get your own con plate and keep your car looking good now the boxer is a convertible so there's the cayman and the boxer the boxer came first this is actually a first generation boxer and the boxer means that it is a convertible now i won't be opening the convertible top for two reasons first of all it is absolutely frigid outside but second of all, sometimes these older tops don't really like to work when it's cold. This is really a warm weather vehicle. And so I can't really blame it and I don't wanna risk it. So the top will stay up for now. However, this is my best artist rendition of what it looks like without a top. But overall, I really love driving the Boxer. And I think this is really all of the Porsche that I would really need. Yes, 911s are amazing. I, I drove one a year and a half ago and it was one of the best moments of my life. I love Porsche 911s. They will always be amazing. But I don't have Porsche 911 money. I'm a YouTuber. This is more in my wheelhouse. This is actually an obtainable Porsche for me. PacuWeb Ford is asking half of what I paid for my modern Mazda 3. And as you saw, and as you'll see again, It's plenty quick. Yes, the 911 is faster, but you have to start weighing, do you really need it? I love this car. This is all of the Porsche that I need in my life. And let me tell you something. Something happened to me recently. I, I was at home late at night and I've been quarantining, trying to do my best, you know, social distancing and things like that. And I was watching some videos and I got a sharp pain in my chest. A sharp, sharp pain. It was quick. It was, boom, sharp pain. Ah. Oh. And I grabbed my chest and it sort of felt like this hypertension. And what it was, genuinely and honestly, the pain in my chest was the aching for a Porsche product. I want a Porsche in my life so bad. They just feel right. You know, Porsches to me feel like a childhood best friend. I have a handful of people in my life that I've known for literally decades. They know everything about me. And so, when I have a conversation with them, when I hang out with them, when I go on a walk with them, I don't have to do any extra legwork. They know me so well that life just flows. I feel like this Porsche knows me. I don't know it all that well, but this Porsche knows me. And that's what I love about Porsche products. They honestly feel perfect. They're, 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 there's no other describing it. Yes, you can buy a 911. Yes, it'll have more power, but do you really need it? Because I don't. I don't need the 911 tax. I'm plenty happy with this boxer. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to Spencer Shipley from Packy Web Ford for getting me into this Porsche boxer. It's always a good morning when a Porsche is on your schedule. And that is all a thank you to Spencer Shipley. His information is up on the screen. If you want to buy this here boxer, please give him a call. If you don't, if you just want to buy a Ford, give him a call. If you want to buy any car, not a Ford, not a Porsche, give him a call. He does great giveaways for his customers as well as referrals. So if you refer a customer to him, he rewards you handsomely. And I absolutely love that about him. He's a really thorough through and through guy and he's making dreams come true because it is a snowy Monday morning and I'm behind the wheel of a German missile. I love it. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video and subscribe if you really like to. Take care guys.